Welcome to the 516 Project Midweek Devotional. We're really excited to have you with us today and to share a word with you today. Um, today we wanted to say a big extra special thank you to Life Point Church and Pastors Daniel and Tammy Floyd uh, for sharing one of the campus pastors with us. We've got Josh Tibbs delivering a message for you today and excited to jump in here and uh, share the word of God with you. Josh, appreciate having you on. Happy to be here. Awesome. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about you and what church you're with and yeah, 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 yeah. Well, first off, James, I, I want to thank you for, for having me on, man. Anything for you. I know, I know you're doing some amazing things leading 516, and I hear about you know, all, the, all the projects and helping people. And even in, we were talking about before we started recording about um, even through this crisis, y'all are still maybe not doing as much inside the house, but still doing external projects and uh, building porches and ramps for people who who can't walk upstairs and so I mean that's awesome for for you guys but yeah I'm a I'm with Life Point Church I'm the campus pastor at the Fredericksburg location uh, we have six locations um, launching two more out of state and out of the country so that's really exciting so yeah, that, that was some pretty cool news oh my word yeah one in Germany and one in uh, Louisville and uh, we have a watch party in Connecticut and a lot of people watch throughout the country and stuff. So it's really cool, really cool to be a part. And I know you and I were, were talking about, uh, you know, different foods and everything. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to go visit Louisville because I've heard they've got some amazing food. I've heard there. they got some good food in Louisville. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to call Pastor Sean and be like, hey, uh, we're, we're, we're road tripping. But let's go. <laughs> yeah, and he'll know the places too. Yeah, like day yeah. one, he'll know where to go. <laughs> so. That'll be good. Well, yeah. So, um, so I know you are, are, are somewhat new to our area. Um, and so give us a kind of the, the quick little, um, you know, nickel tour of how you, how you ended up in Fredericksburg. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I am new to the area, uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. I love the name, the city names in, in Virginia, by the way, I am from Alabama, which you probably can hear in my accent. <laughs> um, and then I moved to, Houston, Texas. I went to a ministry school in Alabama through Church of the Highlands. Um, it's a large church in Alabama. And then through there, I went to a church in Houston, Texas called Hope City. And it was, it was great. We, it was, it was, it was fun. Um, Houston's a cool city. That's what we were talking about, the food in Houston. If you haven't been to Houston, go to Houston and just get the food. It's great. The tacos, <laughs> try the tacos and barbecue. Um, and then through that, I uh, was there for four years and moved back to Alabama, got married, and I played golf every day for about a year just, just to enjoy some golf and got married. And uh, then my wife and I, we moved to Fredericksburg to be a part of Life Point. We came to visit a friend. Um, who who's at the church here uh, a few years ago and we were just attending life point on Sunday and just saw the service saw the move of the Holy Spirit and we me and my wife both we just said this is something we want to be a part of mm -hmm. so we we packed up and moved to Fredericksburg and here we are that's awesome man yeah well hey so um so yes yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to to the word you're bringing today uh you know like I said we just we wanted to do these as kind of a midweek devotional um, yeah. and as, as 516 project. We're based off Matthew 516. So we want, we want to be the light of Jesus in the community. Um, but one thing, of course, we know is that, you know, a lantern can't shine unless it's filled up. You know, an empty lantern is just going to be an empty lantern. And so we wanted to do these as a way to, you know, kind of have that midweek fill up and uh, make sure that our lights are shining brightly for the for the community to see and uh you know thanks to the web for the world to see really awesome. uh, so uh looking forward to hearing from you and uh, like i said i'll just kind of turn the mic over to you at this point and yeah. uh, see what what god's given you to share with us yeah yeah well i love it i love the i love the why behind the call and you're right like we got to be filled up and so we can be pouring out to others but if we're not filled up then we can't be pouring out much so i love the the why behind this and i hope this is just encouraging to some people um i know some crazy times right now me and me and you were talking about before before this of how do you prepare for something like this just first really this is a first in history um i know you've been very familiar with disaster relief and um when i was in i lived in houston when hurricane harvey hit uh, uh, which was a terrible you know, crisis you know disaster that wrecked the city but this is nothing like that 
this is completely different, but yeah, I want to just share, share what I've been reading. I've kind of, I've been uh, reading an Exodus, uh, which there's so much in the book of Exodus. And I've just stayed in this spot for, for a few days, just getting more from it and getting more from it. But you know, the story of um, when God calls Moses, maybe you don't, maybe you do, but God calls Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. So God is using Moses to lead the Israelites out of captivity. And this is the moment where uh, Moses is just a shepherd at the time and God meets him and tells him uh, what he wants for Moses is calling Moses. This is a, the burning bush story. If you don't know about it, James, I know you know about it. Um, but so Moses is walking in the wilderness and he sees this bush on fire that isn't burning up it's just continually on fire which i always read this story I, this is you know i always read this my whole mind thinks forgive me everyone but i read this story and i'm like moses seeing a burning bush that isn't catching on uh isn't burning up i'm like it sounds like moses was burning a bush you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's so wrong <laughs> but it was if you know the story god it's god speaking to him through this sign and God tells him, take off your shoes, this holy ground. And he tells Moses, Hey, I'm calling you to lead the Israelites out of captivity. And I want you to do it, Moses. I'll do it through you. And this is Moses's response in Exodus three, verse 11. It says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Verse 12. And God said, I will be with you. And I love this story because personally I can relate to Moses. Like that's a, that's a quite, that's like an insecure response. God tells Moses what he wants him to do. And Moses is like, God, there's no way I'm not good enough. Who am I to do this? I don't know about you, but I can relate like in this time, this is what's happening. This is new. This is what the government's saying. This is what social media is saying. James, we were talking about that social media crazy right now. Uh, pro tip, limit your time on social media, unless you're watching videos like this. Um, but it's like, what, what are we going to do? This is craziness. Who am I to deal with this? And I love God's response to Moses. He says, I will be with you. And I think in today's culture, we read that. And honestly, at least me, I would think that, or maybe some of us would think God would answer different. Like, Moses says, who am I to do this? I think we could tend to think like God would say to Moses, no, 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 you can do it. Or no, you're beautifully and wonderfully made. Or no, Moses, I've given you every gift under the sun. Or, or no, Moses, like you got it. Just this encouragement. God doesn't respond that way. God says, I'll be with you. So when Moses asks God a question about himself, God answers with a response about himself. I love it because he's saying, Moses, you can't do it. <laughs> Moses, you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You don't have enough faith, but God is saying, but I'm big enough. I can do it through you. And that's our source of strength through this time. It, it, it takes the pressure off of us to know, yeah, we, we can't overcome this by ourselves. No, we, we can't we, we aren't, we aren't good enough. We, we may not have a big enough faith. Like we're going to be nervous. We're, we're it's, it's going to be hard, but our source of strength comes from knowing that in ourselves we're weak, but he is strong. And so what you were saying, James, of being filled up and, um, I'd encourage you. Yes. This Wednesday devotional is great. And listen to things like this and be a part of a church. If, if you're a part of a church that, isn't meeting right now, get online. Uh, there's a lot of great churches in the area. Get online, watch a service, be a part of church digitally. But it's up to you to spend time with God. Like you can fill up on your own every morning. So I'd encourage you do that because God is your source of strength. It's not in ourselves. It's all in God. And I love that because it, it just takes the pressure off of, it feels like it takes the pressure off of us, you know. Yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, we look at, we want to look at God to be this, you know, this motivational speaker. Yeah. We want to look at him and, and say, okay, God, you know, just, you know, tell me I'm great. Fill me up. Let me lead the charge. Right. Um, 
And so, yeah, like this example is perfect because the guy's saying, yeah, you know, you're, you're good. I love you. I got you, but I'm stronger and I'm going to, I'm going to push you through this and I'm going to lead gonna you this it. and I'm going to make sure that this is happening uh, through you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's, yeah, it takes that, it takes that pressure and that responsibility off of us. Yeah. It's all on him. Our job is to believe and it's his job to perform. Mm -hmm. You know, we set the stage for him to move on it. And I, I think too, the, it, this this is a time that it tests our faith like we say we have faith but it's the hard times like this that really really shows if we have faith or not and romans 8 8 28 um yeah romans 8 28 or is it 8 29 or is it 8 31 romans 8 28 for god uses In that window everything it's one of those yeah. everything for the good of those who love him and so if we believe that if we truly have faith and believe it we know that through this, God is going to use it for good. It may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen a year from now or even a few years from now. But one day, it may be when we get to heaven, we see all that God, all the good God brought out of this situation. I, I, I believe um, people are, are depending on him more than ever before. I believe people are praying that haven't prayed in in years, but they're praying right now because they're waking up with uncertainty. They don't know about the future. You know, I think too, you know, whenever I, I look at some of the stories, you know, like with Moses and some of the other, uh, you know, old, old Testament characters, um, it, it always, I don't know, it always blows my mind because, you know, I've certainly seen God work in my life, but I've never walked up and seen the burning bush or I've never, you know, I've never yeah. been standing at the river and watched it part. You know, all these different things. I'm like, just to, to think about what must have been going through their mind at those moments and to, to see just that huge physical representation of God right there. Yeah. Um, must I, it, it blows my mind. Yeah. It, it must have been incredible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I hope that uh, can be encouraging. Like I said, James, I, I love what you're doing with, Five sixteen. I know as a church, we we partner with you, and we want to be a part of anything we can with with you guys. So love love y'all's heart and what what y'all are doing. And yeah, no, we we appreciate having y'all on the team and uh, you know serving our community together. Y'all been doing so much too. I mean, I've been watching along on social media and you know of course helping out here and there. But between the you know the masks and the food and all kinds of different things going on, so that's been great to see everything happening through through the church. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like. You know, the way we did church previously, we're having to pivot and change for this time. We're, church right now looks like the, we're grocery, we're, we're grocery shopping. Yeah. Like we're, it's like we're uh, working for shift or yeah. something. You know, we deliver groceries. We're making masks and the community has been great. People donating sewing machines and just helping. And um, yeah. it's so cool listening. Like people get referred to us from uh from government places yeah. so it's it's like the world is leaning on the church like never before i think people are praying like never before well i think it's it's cool too how this is being used to spread the gospel really because you know i've seen uh and, and this is one of the positive things i've seen out of social media through this is that uh you know things are getting shared about the church you know especially like when y'all go out and deliver food deliver masks yeah, that's getting shared on people's social media platforms that yeah. probably never would have shared anything about church or didn't even maybe know about church, yeah. but it's been shared through. I mean, I've seen it on Spotsy Sheriff's uh, platform. Yeah. I've seen it on a couple of the hospitals' platforms. Yeah. yeah. So these are organizations that wouldn't be sharing a Christian message on a normal basis. Yeah. But here they are sharing it, and, and imagine all the people that are seeing that that wouldn't have tuned in to LifePoint or wouldn't have tuned in to you know Five Sixteen Project or, or whatever other uh you know christian organization yeah because it's being shared through these other channels they're getting that exposure and you know hopefully it starts making them ask some questions and seek some things out and find some people in their lives that can pour into them and that is that is such a good point like what if the social media feeds were filled up more with serve projects and what churches are doing and organizations like yours are doing and instead of crazy politics and gossip and what if what if the what if everyone's social feeds were filled with that stuff and devotionals and and such i i tell uh i tell my team this is kind of like um 
bear with me here and I'll walk you through it. But it's kind of like a funeral where a funeral, it's, it's hard. It's a sad time. It's not a, it's not a wedding. It's not a, woo-hoo, everything's great. And for the most part, people are, are sad at funerals. Um, it's a, it's a tough time, but they tell you when you're, when you're performing or when you're, uh, when you're facilitating a funeral to speak to the people in the room and share the gospel because everyone in that room, they're contemplating life and death. They're thinking through the lens of eternity more than ever before because someone passed away in front of them. And it's kind of, that's kind of like this in a way of people are contemplating eternity like never before. And so when they see our, our social media feeds and they see what churches are doing, like I think it's, it's just a touch point to pull, push them in the right direction, you know? Yeah, absolutely. No, I think it's incredible, incredible opportunity. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate it. Yeah. And um, I will, uh, what I'll do is I'll put some, uh, I'll put the comments in the, down below uh, so that people can find LifePoint and find you and everything on, on social media. Right. And so they can get some more, some more encouragement uh, throughout the week. Yeah. Um, but we definitely greatly appreciate having you with us well, thank and you. look forward to, to getting this out to folks to, uh, to be able to get a little midweek pick me up and, and fill yeah. up on their, uh, on their faith. Yeah. Um, okay, let, let me, let me pray for you before we, before we end and, uh, then we'll, we'll finish up. That's great. Or just, uh, I want to thank you for, for Josh and for LifePoint and for, uh, all the lives that they're impacting, uh, through this time. And Lord, just please continue to, uh, to encourage him and his wife as, uh, as they uh, help to lead the church and uh, just continue to keep, keep their lanterns full so that they can be the light as well. But we thank you for the blessings you bestowed upon us and for this opportunity to serve. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, man. Folks, make sure you're following along. You know, like I said, find LifePoint on, uh, on social media and check them out and follow along with what they've got going on. Um, I'm, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're probably already following along with 516 Project. Um, make sure you know, you're getting uh, on the social media links and liking our page and following our YouTube and all that good stuff. But uh, we appreciate it. And uh, God bless you. And we will see you soon.